Hey babes, welcome to the Happiness Heals channel. My name is Miss T and today we're working on my estimated budget for my May 1st paycheck. So I'm going to write in May 1st, 2020 as my paycheck date and then I'm going to write in my income source. For this one, I have my paycheck from my job as well as my savings deposit as well as rollover fund. My estimated paycheck will be the amount that I received for my last check which was $2,914.62. Savings is always $50. I don't think I have any specific rollover funds for this paycheck so I'm going to estimate that to be zero but it may be more and I'll fill that in when I get to my actual pay paycheck budget. So my total here will be $2,964.62. So the bills that I have coming up on the first include Metro PCS, which is my daughter's cell phone service. And that is on May the 2nd. And that is for $50. And then I have Credit One, which is my credit card. I've pretty much paid that off, but recently I had to actually make a single purchase on it before because I forgot my debit card that's due on the fifth total there should be 2935 Five. That may be zero if I decide to just go ahead and pay it before this payday happens, which I'm debating that I will do. Let's see which other bills do I have during that pay period. So I have my daughter's cell phone bill, Metro PCS, Credit One, which is the credit card. Um, I had originally estimated $50, and like I said, that was reduced to the amount $29.35. After pay, which is due on the 7th. By the way, this counts calendar. I created a tutorial on my channel as well, putting together my May budget calendar. So if you're interested, you can run through that. It has a lot of music inspiration to go along with me putting it together. But uh, basically it just shows the steps in creating a budget. Obviously yours doesn't have to be this elaborate. I just wanted something a little vibrant since this is my birthday month, but um, it at least tells you the different steps needed to put a budget calendar in place so that you can visually see when your bills are due. Also, also looking at the key on this calendar, all of my bills that are in the blue color are to be paid with my May 1st check. So I want to make sure I'm covering all of them after pay my household expense, which I'm not sure what that final bill will be. Five, ten. And household bill is, okay, let me use what my last one is, even though I know it's going to be, le let's just say a thousand dollars, a round number. It might be a little more, might be less, depending on our, our utilities this month. And I'll make that adjustment on my actual payday. Amazon Prime, yes. Oh, that reminds me then. I do have money to roll over. 119 is the total. And I have to see what my rollover funds are going to be. So actually, you know what? I will still leave this as zero. But when I do my actual, I will have rollover funds here because I have a sinking fund that has been collecting money in order to help pay off this Amazon Prime. So I'll include that when I do my actual payday budget. Let's see what else is there. Prestige, my daughter's senior photos. Those are due on on the 11th and I think that will actually be the final payment for that as well. $85.17 and Dr. Abbott is a copay, medical copay, so that will come out of my variable expenses. So I think I've covered all of our estimated expenses up until now and I also want to remind myself that Mother's Day is coming and I do have some money set aside as well in special days so I will put that towards my Mother's Day gifts. But I need to add up both of those sinking funds and make sure that I include that money in my rollover fund for the month. Okay, so I've got all of that set aside and let's see, our bill total here is... So the estimated bill total will be $1,303.80. Okay, that leaves us with 2964.62-1303.0.3.8-1660.82. That leaves me with $1,660.82. And if you've been watching my videos, you know that I handle my variable expenses last. So we're going to jump over here to sinking funds. My sinking funds remain the same. 
same. So I have Christmas 2020, membership, special days, and Be Happy Fund. I've been putting my Be Happy Fund on here, but I'm actually wondering whether I will add more money to that. I think I might actually forego that this month. So I'll actually put zero here. And what I do want to start saving for actually is my car insurance. Yes, that I know I do want to start saving towards. Okay, so Christmas 2020 is 130 per payday. Membership, I have been putting $24 towards that. And I think I will continue to do that because even though I pay off my Amazon Prime, I can go ahead and start collecting for next year as well as some of the other memberships that I have. I need to add them all up and see what the amount I need to be contributing each payday. A special day, I normally set aside $20 for that. And car insurance, my contribution is $1. 92 here i also need pick monkey 12.99 a month i may look into doing an annual membership to save me some money on that um 192.40 for my sinking fund amount for car insurance i've also started saving towards my pet expenses so i'm going to put 40 dollars. adding that up was 406.40 Okay. And then in terms of savings, I know that I've been putting $100 towards that emergency fund and savings cushion 25 for each of those. And I actually want to check on my May savings challenges. Let me set aside $40 for that $40. And that brings me to, okay, I'm going to adjust this here because I actually want to just reduce that checking account cushion. I don't think I need to put a whole hundred dollars in there because it's pretty built up at this point. So I'm going to put $60 there, $40 in towards my May savings challenge, and then my emergency funds and my saving cushion 25 each, which gives me a total of savings 150 Now for extra debt. I know I have two medical bills. I want to pay all. One is for $108.15. And I also have another medical bill. I want to put a hundred dollars towards that gives me a total of 208 15. Looking at what my sinking funds are, my uh, extra budget, and my extra savings expenses are, let me see how much I will have left over for variable funds. In order to do that, I take my leftover funds after subtracting out my bills, which leaves me $1,660.82, minus 406.4, minus 208.15, minus 150. That leaves me with 800 $96.27. That, let me write in my variable expenses. That will be groceries, dining out, beauty, medical, pet, dry cleaning, gas, car wash, charity, and miscellaneous. For this budget, I know that I have at least one medical copay to cover, and I normally estimate at least two. So I'm just to be on the safe side, going to set aside $100 for medical. That will allow us up to two more additional copays if we have any more telemedicine visits uh, during that period. Groceries, let's say $150. Dining out, $150. I may do like a Costco run or something like that just to make sure we have our supply maintained. Yeah, I'm hoping that that covers it. So actually, let's start with what our budget is. 896.27 minus 150 minus 150 minus 100. That leaves me with 496.27. Dry cleaning, I do want to set aside something because I've been putting that off. So we will take out 30 for that. And then our pet does not have any medical appointments scheduled during that period. And we do have some money saved in the sinking fund in the event that we need to use it for him. So I'm going to put that as zero. Gas car wash, let's stick with our 40 that we've been setting aside. Charity, set aside 26 for that. That, which leaves me with 400. But I do have a purchase I might make actually for my beauty. So let's go with. And then that leaves us with $250.27. Now, obviously, between now and my payday in a week, I may completely change my mind about how I want to allocate funding. But this is the beauty of having an estimated budget and then a payday budget. It gives you some time in between originally thinking about how to allocate your funds and then coming back to it when you actually have the funds in hand and reevaluating 
whether the way that you originally intended to spend your money is still relevant or if you need to make adjustments. And if you watch prior videos, you will see throughout the week, I may go in and make adjustments in that actual column based on information that I know or that comes to my attention during the period. So when I'm actually doing my actual, my actual budget, those amounts will be included in my actual payday budget. Uh, the one thing that we do need to do now is zero out everything to make sure that we get to zero. So the last thing I need to do in the, the uh, variable expenses is just add them up. 896.27. Okay, that checks out. So let's start with our total for income, $2,964.62 minus bills, $1,660.82. We bring that down to the leftover row in the variable expenses. Then we subtract out 896.27, which gives us 764.55. Then we bring that up to the leftover column and sinking funds minus by 406 point 40 which was the sinking funds total that leaves us with 358.15 bring that down to the leftover column in the extra debt section subtract out the extra debt total leaves us with 150 dollars we bring down the 150 dollars subtract out the savings total which is 150 and we're left with zero we have balanced out our budget now i will actually come back on my payday film another video with an update just to show you if there were any adjustments to this, what my final expenses will be for this pay period, and answer any questions you may leave in the comments about putting together your paycheck bill tracker. I hope this is helpful, and I hope that you'll join me for my next video. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it, as well as hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be in tune the next time we upload a video on the Happiness Heals channel. Ciao!